Good evening, everyone who is on the Zoom line. And the line. it's good to see everyone on the Zoom line. It's good to have everybody on the phone line tonight. It is Friday night in Mother Vaughn. I think it's 1,068 or maybe 1,069 tonight. And I'm just glad to have each of you all here tonight on this Friday night. It's getting cold outside. So I want everybody to bundle up if you're out or stay in and stay warm. But I want you to know that the temperature on Saturday, on Sunday rather, will be a good temperature because we'll be inside the church. And so don't worry about not, don't start planning on not to come because the deacons and the trustees got the, the, the heat are red if it's cold. But we look forward to seeing you this Sunday or in advance for seeing you this Sunday. This Sunday, we have a great time to celebrate with our youth, our um, Black History Month program, followed by a message that I will, the Lord has given me for us to be respired in our Christian walks, uh, particularly in light of trouble uh, and that we may have faced, but being inspired by the trouble to go on to do great things for the Lord. Tonight, we're in the book of Mark, chapter 9. Uh, we're continuing. This is a pretty long chapter, so we still got a little bit more work to do. But tonight, we're picking up here. In verse 38. Now, the last thing we addressed last night was in chapter 9, verses 36, 37, uh, that we see Jesus sharing with his disciples the necessity of, of it really is talking about their personal behavior. Some of them had argued about who was going to be in charge, and, and, and Jesus let them know immediately that who was in charge, who had power, who was in control was totally relevant in the kingdom of God. He went on to use a young child uh, as an example of what God really wants. God people to serve him because he used as an example this child a child in palestine at the time of jesus teaching was to be seen and not heard or sometimes not even seen and not heard at all but instead to be somebody who may have been um who needed somebody to take care of them jesus has given us an instruction is if we want to please god to serve if we want to serve god to take the same pop to to, to to minister to to serve to help to assist those who don't have who are left out. And so that's what, what Jesus finally says. If you serve this little child, you're serving me. And if you're serving me, you're really not serving me, but you're serving him that sent me. Otherwise, Jesus is saying we're serving God. So what Jesus did in these last few verses was just kind of make very plain the real necessity of our of understanding. I want to say it like this, understanding our behavior as Christians. Now, somebody might say, well, Pastor Thomas, I'm real humble. And you very well may be, but that is a struggle. Uh, that each of us as Christians must engage in. What does that mean? We must engage constantly um, in a posture and, and be prayerful about being humble and also be prayerful about serving as opposed to, look to be, looking to be served. I'll be very transparent. One of the challenges, quite frankly, of being a pastor, and I, I want to say this before I go a step further, I appreciate all of the wonderful and loving and kind things you all do for me. I'm going to tell you all a quick story before I go to the lesson. I went to, I was at a funeral today and I was sitting down and felt all. Uh, at another church and so everybody was sitting there eating and i, and I know sister walker on here not a sister vamp y'all on here y'all this will make y'all laugh but i was sitting there and somebody said pastor thomas you want something to eat and i was like yeah i'm looking around i was looking for a sister walker sister valley somebody sister carmen somebody to bring me something to eat and i i had to laugh because you all have, have given me such a um warm y'all treated me so warmly in, in regards to the greater things and smaller things and i had to laugh at myself uh because i you all have been so kind to me one of the challenges then on that same note and I, I, is, is to, to, to make sure that I don't look or think that I'm better or superior because I'm because of the service you provide for me. And it's important for me then to go out and serve others. A lot of times I'm very diligent. If I can, I try to serve those in St. Peter, but I definitely take upon myself the necessity of being prayerful about being a servant because being a servant, again, is, 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 as Jesus says, it's not about folk doing for you. It's about do, do, you doing for somebody else. It doesn't mean that you're wrong if somebody serves you. The wrong comes if you don't feel like you need to serve nobody else. And so that's what Jesus establishes as, a, as really kingdom living. Kingdom living is not looking for somebody to look out for you. It's seeing who you can look out for. Even as somebody looks out for you, even if somebody helps you, serves you, that you need to be willing as a Christian to serve somebody else. Um, the titles, and this is one of the challenges, I'll be very transparent about this, uh, in the church. One of the things about titles, titles sometimes can create all sense of superiority. And I want to be very clear that every word in the Bible as related to doing the work of the Lord um, is, is, is regarding service. The word ministry means service. The word deacon means service. The word pastor means service. Really the word bishop, all these words mean service. Why? Because being a servant is significant is important, is is vital to us, our work as Christians, being a servant. Now, keeping that in mind, that posture in mind, we move now to verse 30, 
37. I'm sorry, 38. And 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 John responded to um, just making a comment, a statement. Here's what John said. John said, um, and 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 as, as if he was, he wasn't. You know how somebody can kind of go slightly off 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 course, but still be in the same conversation. John says, Master, we saw somebody casting out devils in the name, and he he's not, he's not with us, and we told him to stop because he is not with us. He's not following us. He's not one of your twelve disciples. And, 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 and let me see if I can put this in 23 parlance. John, and I can imagine it had to kind of make John, if I could really get into John's shoes for a minute. John might have had some little hurt feelings because the disciples had just been kind of embarrassed because the other nine could not um, heal this man who had the son who was demon possessed. So now John decides to kind of, you know, I'm not even going to say he was showing out, but he was trying to make a point to Jesus. Jesus, guess what? I saw a person, this man, he was casting out devils in your name. and But he's not with us. We don't know him like that. And and we told him to stop because he's not with us. And, 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 and this is where competition and clickism, clickish, clickishness is written outlawed in the Bible. I want to say that right there. In the Bible, we see that there's no position or posture for clickishness. Sometimes in the church, and I, I think I've been passing just about long enough to say this, even in the local church, there can be clicks. Somebody said, well, I'm on this ministry. I'm on, I'm on that ministry. And they're not on our ministry. Or somebody said they hadn't done this and they can't sit on that row. Or they can't be up here with us because they hadn't gone through this. And, and, it, and it becomes a, uh, it, it creates artificial segregation or artificial separation in the body of Christ. Likewise, sometimes between churches, if we're not careful, we are find ourselves looking down on the church around the corner of us and they're not doing what we're doing or maybe they're not following uh, maybe they're not doing it the way we do it. We may look at another denomination and say, well, you know, they um they don't baptize like we do. They're not like we are. We may it, It's all kinds of clickages. We may look at the church and say, well, they don't get dressed up for church. They're not good as we are. Jesus responds to John's statement in regards to telling somebody to stop casting out demons in Jesus' name by saying this. Look at verse 39. Jesus said, don't you forbid him. Don't you try to stop him. For well, there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can like, likely speak evil of me. Jesus said, if a person is doing a miracle in Jesus, in his name, in other words, somebody said, in the name of Jesus, whatever, I rebuke you, uh, say the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you may, you must be, you can be saved. Anybody who's saying that, Jesus said, that's, that person can't talk evil of him. Now, that's the hallmark of this, this verse. I want to slow it down. At the end of the day, there may be other believers that serve God in a different way, that, that are servants of Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ. They may dress different, look different, act different, be from a different place. But guess what? If their operations, they tell that they're, what they're doing is Jesus-driven, Jesus-filled, Jesus-guided, Jesus-directed, then we can't get mad at them and tell them they can't do what they're doing for the Lord. As a young man who's a preacher, and he has this chewed, and I mean, when I say it's chewed, I mean, he just decided that his ministry not in the building. He goes out and preaches Christ to folk in the street. And, and his desire is that those people come to Christ and find themselves at a body of belief, but he's not a church. He says his job is an evangelist to get people to come to Christ. Matter of fact, uh, me and Reverend Stanley, Reverend Stanley, brother, my cousin, his ministry is to seek those who've been um, in, on, on, in our jail ministry, goes out to seek people who are in jail. Their job is not to try to create a church. Their job is to try to get people to come to Christ. And so here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that we cannot look around and, and, and look like all of the people who look like us, act like us, think like us, um, can, can reach people for Christ. That's what I've come to understand. The reason why we support some ministries, particularly ministries to the homeless, is because that's a ministry that requires a, a person, a specific, specific person, called for that ministry. And so here's what Jesus is trying to tell us. There is no room, space, or uh, posture or position for clicking in the body of Christ. Jesus said, do not tell that man he can't do that. Because anybody that does anything in my name, Jesus says, it cannot, it's not going to turn around and speak evil of me. We understand this fundamentally by, by understanding this concept. Okay. If a person receives Jesus Christ as Savior, then they in fact cannot have an if they if they if they speak Jesus, preach Jesus then they can never really take a position against Jesus because they'll be contradictory to who, who they profess faith in. Let me see if I can turn around another way. In the book of Philippians chapter one, uh, Paul 
had messages that were brought to him in the Philippians in the Roman jail. And these messages were shared with him. And these messages were that there were other preachers out there who were talking about Paul, like Paul ain't like me and Paul can't preach like me, but they were still preaching Jesus. And Paul says, far be it from me to be so personally offended that somebody don't like me and they preach to Jesus and I want to stop. Paul said, they preach to Jesus, let them preach to Jesus. Even if they're doing it just for, even if they're doing it despite me. Paul says, I'd rather Jesus be preached than to, to me to stop anybody from preaching Jesus. And I think that's something we as Christians have to understand. If somebody's preaching Jesus, whether we got along with them, didn't get along with, whether we went to the same school, didn't go to the same school, whatever the situation, we must understand that the necessity and the imp impact of preaching Jesus supersedes anything else, any personal feelings. John was in his feelings because he saw great powerful acts done in the name of Jesus that he had not been yet a part of. And sometimes, if I can be real, we get in our feelings because somebody else has a skill, gift, commitment that we don't have. But Jesus is letting us know there's no place for that in the body of Christ. Let me leave one more verse. John says in verse 4, for he that Jesus says, for he that is not against us is on our part. One of the things I think that I, I, so at my job at the city, one of my work, one of my specific works is to coordinate the clergy. And it's always fascinating for me because some of the guys I've known forever and then some new guys come to town, but sometimes there's always natural clickishness between people for whatever reason, what, what seminary they went to, or what church they passed, or what denomination. Then sometimes in the same denomination, there's a separation because one church is older than another one. Or some church, somebody planted a church and somebody been in the established church. But what Jesus lets us know here is that we are greater in number if we can work together. Reverend Parker just talked about unity. And I want us to understand there's a necessity of unity in the local body of Christ and a necessity for unity in the body of Christ. What if all bodies of Christ on Camelton Road start working together to evangelize? What if that happens? Mm -hmm. it, it would be transformative. Men. What if all of the churches on Camelton Road, just on Camelton Road, began to, to outreach and go out into drug houses and knock on doors? It would be transformative ministry. What if we all bound it together and said, we're going to provide some, 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 some space for homeless, homeless people and, and, and so that they may be stabilized so we can preach Christ to them? It would be a powerful ministry. But unfortunately, sometimes we look at things as being separate as opposed to being together. Jesus says, who is not against us is on our part. And that's the, the way I want us to begin looking at, at St. Peter Baptist Church. If they're not against Christ, they can be against us, but if they're not, if they're not against Christ, guess what? They're on our side. If we are in Christ, whether whatever our background is, what our personal feelings are, we must understand we're on the same team. We're fighting for the cause of Christ. We are under the banner of Christ. Jesus says again, he that is not against us is on our part, is on our side. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give this last verse, and I'm going to let y'all go. Verse 41 says this. Whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, realize I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Jesus says something as simple or as seemingly insignificant as giving somebody a cup of water is noticed by Jesus. How about that right there? God notices the little things we do. He said, if anybody just give a cup of water, somebody say, not even a cup of Coke or a cup of coffee or some nice iced tea with sweetener in it. Maybe not even Alma Palmer. Jesus said, if you just give somebody a cup of water to drink in his name, Jesus says, and if, and if a person does that just because that person belongs to Christ, Jesus said that person shall in no wise lose his reward. In other words, effectively, that person shall be rewarded, my brother and sister, for doing that work. Let us look at what we do in a very serious way. If we're able to do what we do in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christ, if we're able to help somebody, even if it's just something as simple as a cup of water. Sometimes mm -hmm. church say, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. Let's say be the church that we're going to do what we can. If it's just giving somebody a cup of water, let's give them a cup of water. If we give them some food, let's give them some food. If we give them a hot meal, let's give them a hot meal. Whatever it is, we're, in order to show Christ, if it's done in Christ's name, guess what? God, Jesus says, God is watching. I'm watching and I'll reward you for your diligence. I'm going to stop tonight. Sometimes it's very easy to think that reward comes to position. But I stopped by here in this parked car on the side of the road because I didn't want to miss class to tell you that what's most important is not your title. What's most important is your willingness to serve the Lord. I'm going to stop tonight. It's 8, it's 722, but I pray that God will grant us a great peaceful night tonight and that this word will just take root in our hearts we may be served, we may serve the Lord better. 
honestly, than we've ever served the Lord before. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, God, we should love you. We do, Lord. We thank you and we praise you for all of your greatness and all of your goodness and all of your mercy. God, I pray tonight that by your power and out of your love, Lord, that you would allow every household, every, every individual Christian, every believer to be blessed tonight by your word. I pray, God, tonight that this word will get in our hands and feet, especially this word, Lord, that we may be ready to serve you better. God, let your word get in our hearts that we may be strengthened in our inner man. God, let your word get on our mind, in our mind, that I have peace that surpasses all understanding and the fire dark they will be quenched. God, let your word get in our ears that we can hear your word over the winds of the world. And God, I pray that your word will get on our lips, tongues, vocal, lungs, and throat. We may declare your word to a dying world and then to each other to ourselves. God, keep us, strengthen us, Give us a heart to serve you as a church and as individual Christians. God, again, I pray that you build a hand of protection around us, that the fire of the will be quenched. I pray, God, you give us a posture of praise, that we will pray without ceasing, and we will give you thanks in all things, knowing that this is your will for those of us in Christ Jesus. Give us a posture of prayer, that we will pray without ceasing, that we continue in prayer in all things. And then, God, give us the mindset, the heart set, to rejoice in the fact that we have a relationship with you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen.